Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including record profits, Cybertruck timelines, updates on Giga Texas Model Y production, 4680 battery updates, Tesla's earnings call, and Model S deliveries resuming after a hold, so let's get into it. First up today, Tesla was profitable yet again, and this time profitable enough from vehicle and energy products to dispel the arguments of regulatory credits. Tesla had their earnings call and report yesterday and posted a $1.3 billion gap operating income with 11% operating margin in Q2. Their gap net income was $1.1 billion with 28.4% gap automotive gross margin in Q2. Quote, in the second quarter of 2021, we broke new and notable records. We produced and delivered over 200,000 vehicles, achieved an operating margin of 11%, and exceeded $1 billion of gap net income for the first time in our history. For operations, Tesla said, quote, record vehicle production and deliveries in Q2, successful launch of FSD subscription in July, and started delivering the new Model S to customers. Next up, Tesla's new factory is under construction in Texas, and it will be a huge part of their manufacturing capabilities going forward. Not only is it the factory that will eventually build the Cybertruck, but it will build the Model Y and eventually Model 3. The Model Y and Cybertruck are supposed to feature their new 4680 battery cells as unveiled at Battery Day, along with their structural battery pack, which will give the model significant advantages over the previous one. On top of this, Tesla will have even more production capacity so that they can stop selling out of their cars due to higher demand than they can make. New photos taken at Tesla's Giga Texas show that robots are in place and Model Ys are being tested for initial production. In response to this photo, Elon Musk said, quote, I was at Giga Texas yesterday. Team is making excellent progress. Building will be almost a mile long when complete. He's not lying, and after someone posted a video driving by the factory at 85 miles per hour, which took about a full minute to drive past, Elon said, quote, the building is around seven stories tall, so each floor is double size. Hard to appreciate unless you're close. Length will grow by around 500 feet over time. Giga Texas will be a huge factory, and Tesla just announced the latest for production there. In their earnings report, they said, quote, build out of Giga Factory Texas continued to progress in Q2, with commissioning having begun in some areas of the factory. For product timeline out of Texas, they said, quote, we believe we remain on track to build our first Model Y vehicles in Berlin and Austin in 2021. The pace of the respective production ramps will be influenced by the successful introduction of many new product and manufacturing technologies, ongoing supply chain related challenges, and regional permitting. This means that Tesla sees themselves as still producing Model Ys out of Texas and Berlin this year. This will be huge for the Model Y, especially to help keep up with demand in the United States. The Cybertruck, according to Texas, will come after the Model Y begins production, so likely next year, and we'll get into that more in a second. Tesla shared photos of the progress at Giga Texas, showing what the factory looked like six months ago versus today. Stamping presses are inside the factory, along with the body shop, which is showing multiple Model Y bodies being produced on the line. These are the most up-to-date photos we've seen of Giga Texas, and it's showing just how real these factories are and how production coming this year could be a real possibility. At the same time Tesla is building up Giga Texas, Berlin is playing a huge role in their production overseas. As I just read, they still see the Model Y production as on schedule for 2021 out of Berlin, and they further detailed, quote, while our global production lines continue to run as fast as possible, European demand remains well above supply, resulting in growing wait times for delivery. We continue installing equipment, have begun testing tools, and are working as quickly as possible towards starting production in Berlin while growing import volumes in the interim. Tesla shared photos of the tremendous progress happening at Giga Berlin as well. Not only is the outside coming along, but equipment is installed inside, including their new paint shop, which Elon Musk has said will be revolutionary. Now, this demand is not just happening overseas, it is happening nearly everywhere that Tesla sells their vehicles. You can see it right in front of you when looking at Tesla's order pages. The estimated delivery time for a long-range Model 3 and Model Y has now pushed to November. This is the longest wait we've seen for these cars, and there's no reason to think that it's because Tesla is making significantly less cars. Tesla is keeping up with their max capacity and max supply capacity, but demand is through the roof. According to Sawyer Merritt, a Tesla rep told him, quote, I just want to make sure that you're aware that our build slots have almost been sold out for the rest of the year. 
Tesla sold out of Q2 and Q3 inventory well in advance, and it seems that the entire year will be sold out soon enough. At the same time, Tesla has raised prices yet again. The long range Model 3 now starts at $49,990, and the Model Y at $53,990. This is the highest price the Model Y has ever been at, and $5,000 more than the cheapest price we saw for that car last year. Tesla continues to deal with supply constraint, and on the earnings call, they detailed how they were getting through supply shortages, while other manufacturers are having to pause production entirely. First, they said, quote, supply chain challenges, in particular global semiconductor shortages and port congestion, continue to be present in Q2. The Tesla team, including supply chain, software development, and our factories, worked extremely hard to keep production running as close to full capacity as possible. With global vehicle demand at record levels, component supply will have have a strong influence on the rate of our delivery growth for the rest of this year. Then specifically regarding chips, they said, quote, our team has demonstrated an unparalleled ability to react quickly and mitigate disruptions to manufacturing caused by semiconductor shortages. Our electrical and firmware engineering teams remain hard at work designing, developing, and validating 19 new variants of controllers in response to ongoing semiconductor shortages. Tesla is such a software-focused company that they are able to pivot as needed to whatever chip supply can provide. 19 variants of controllers is very complicated and impressive that Tesla is able to navigate. So Tesla is seeing unparalleled demand at the same time as unparalleled supply constraints while beating delivery and profit records. Now going forward, Tesla is planning to launch the Model Y with the structural battery pack and 4680 battery cells. On their report about this, they said, quote, we have successfully validated performance and lifetime of our 4680 cells produced at our Cato facility in California. We are nearing the end of manufacturing value validation at Cato. Field quality and yield are at viable levels, and our focus is now on improving the 10% of manufacturing processes that currently bottleneck production output. While substantial progress has been made, we still have work ahead of us before we can achieve volume production. Internal crash testing of our structural pack architecture with a single piece front casting has been successful. On the call itself, Elon detailed how these cells will be reliable for vehicles. Right now, their limited production volume of these cells is working and reliable, and they are validating this along with life cycle by accruing a million miles on these cells. Certain production processes for it are not yet working though, and they are engineering issues that simply take time. They are not fundamental issues with the cells according to Tesla, but they could delay production. So for Model Y production at Giga Texas, they are not counting on 4680s and structural battery pack. Instead, they have backup plans ready to go making the Model Ys as they currently are with 2170 cells. It's good to see that it is not going to delay the Model Y out of Giga Texas, but unfortunate that the Model Y coming out of Texas will likely not launch with these new cell advantages. Based on what they said in the call, it seems that these 4680 cells won't be in the Model Y until sometime next year out of Texas and Berlin. For normal battery supply, Tesla said that they will see a significant increase in battery cell supply next year, and they plan to overshoot their vehicle cell supply. That way, any excess cells can go into their energy products and vice versa. Then the Model Y will shift to 4680 cells in the Cybertruck likely after that. For the Cybertruck, Tesla detailed that they are currently in the alpha stages. They have finished engineering and architecture and plan to carry over these advantages that the new Model Y has like a front casting and structural battery pack over to the Cybertruck. Once the ramp of the Model Y is going, they will proceed with Cybertruck ramping. Quote, we are also making progress on the industrialization of Cybertruck, which is currently planned for Austin production subsequent to Model Y. Tesla was quick to point out on the call that the Cybertruck is so new with so many changes that it will take a long time to figure out. This falls right in line with what many have expected, and it really seems that we won't be seeing the Cybertruck in 2021. Next up, Elon Musk recently announced that they will be opening up their supercharger network to other EVs later this year. This brought up a lot of concerns from Tesla owners wondering how Tesla will handle this, and if it will significantly affect the seamless experience that charging a Tesla has right now. Goldman Sachs ran the numbers and found that they believe Tesla could make more than $25 billion in annual revenue by opening up the charging network to other cars. When asked about this on their earnings call, Elon said that they are planning for a simple solution. They will make it so that other EV owners download the Tesla app, go to their charger, choose their stall, power level, and such, and plug in. Then depending on how long it takes, they will charge you differently and charge differently for rush hour versus other times. Over in Europe and China, they produce their cars with a standard connection 
connector. But in the US, they developed their own connector, which Elon specifically said he thinks is the best. They plan to make their own adapter and have this available at superchargers so that other cars are able to connect. The good news is that they seem very well aware that in order to do this, their supercharger network growth needs to exceed their vehicle output by a lot. That way they can focus on minimum wait times for all customers using their chargers. However, opening this up actually allows them to expand more. With the added revenue, they said they will be able to improve trip planning tools, grow the network even more, and lower charging prices for everybody. Based on what they said, it will take a lot of work, but they are thinking of all the right things, and it could work out for the best and even better for Tesla owners in the long run for superchargers. Two more updates from the earnings call involved the Tesla Semi and full self-driving subscription. For the Tesla Semi, they said, quote, to better focus on these factories and due to the limited availability of battery cells and global supply chain challenges, we have shifted the launch of the semi-truck program to 2022. Recently, it was reported that the Semi was going to launch soon, but it looks like this has changed due to supply chain issues and focus on their primary selling vehicles. For the full self-driving subscription, Tesla just launched that, but Elon noted on the call that they don't expect growth until the full self-driving beta is in customers' hands. He even talked about the value of this subscription right now being questionable. This was great to hear because I've felt the same way and it shows that Tesla knows the subscription really holds value once it delivers more features than it presents right now. According to Elon Musk, there will be an update to the full self-driving beta for version 9.1 coming this Friday at midnight, so we'll see what that brings. For the progress of full self-driving, Elon said that over time he is still confident they will be able to make their cars drive themselves with current hardware and provide safety substantially greater than that of the average person. Next up, the new Tesla Model S Plaid and Long Range just began deliveries last month. Customers have been receiving their cars, but still many have noticed a giant parking lot stockpiling these vehicles near Tesla's factory. Many have been waiting months to take delivery, which should have happened all the way back in February, and so it's frustrating for many to see hundreds of cars sitting there. Well, last week the Model S was put on hold from deliveries. Several owners posting on forums and reaching out noted that their vehicles were at the delivery center, but Tesla was unable to deliver them. Some advisors said it was a delivery hold on the Model S altogether, while others said it was undergoing an updated inspection process before delivery. Tesla did not communicate to anyone what was going on, but some worried that it could have to do with the Model S Plaid fire that we saw last month. It appears unrelated and no information in that regard has come out. However, Tesla has officially resumed deliveries of the Model S. It was about a week long hold and it was confirmed that it was not an official containment hold. So that means it wasn't actually missing any parts or software. It may have just been a potential issue that they found in their cars and they held deliveries while investigating it out of caution and found that the cars were just fine. Likely we'll never hear what the real reason for this hold was and we'll forget all about it soon enough. Hopefully Tesla can get back up to full delivery capacity on the Model S soon and it seems that they have a backlog of cars ready to be delivered after some cleaning at least. Regarding the design of the Model S and X, the yoke steering wheel still remains controversial. It's a big change and reviewers like Marquez Brownlee, a big Tesla fan, have noted that the buttons on the wheel being touch sensitive are pretty frustrating to use in practice. The Model S only just began delivery, so once the Model X comes, the question has been, will they produce a round steering wheel option? The average customer doesn't want to dive into new technology like this head first with so many changes, but Elon Musk was asked and finally gave us an answer. When asked if there is any chance that the Model S and X could get a normal wheel, he said no. I personally think Tesla is doing this specifically to draw attention to these cars. Everyone is talking about how crazy this wheel is, and it feels like an old Apple tactic to design something crazy enough that everyone has to talk about it and try it, even if they're talking bad about it. It gives Tesla free advertising, and then customers may see this wheel as bad, but consider a Model 3 instead, or at least look into Tesla. Still, I don't think it's the smartest move going forward for sales of vehicles like the Model X, which is their only true SUV option. The average person wanting a full SUV for a family, does not want to deal with a yoke, and Tesla could surely lose a large portion of sales there just due to the yoke. Elon said no, but we might see them change their minds long term. Next up, most Teslas still include a standard 12 volt battery. It ends up being one of their biggest flaws for their cars, and with the new Model S and X refresh, they finally updated to a lithium ion 12 volt battery. When speaking with Sandy Monroe, Elon Musk said, quote, with the new S and X, we are finally transitioning to a lithium ion 12 volt battery. It has way more capacity and the cycle life matches the main battery pack. We should have done that before, but it's great that we are doing it now. 
People got their first look at this battery at the Plaid launch event, and when asked if Tesla could get all customers replacements of these on the Model 3 and Y, Elon said, quote, we will try, preferable for Tesla too, as they last so long. Unlike other makers of cars, our goal is not to profit from service. Best service is not needing service in the first place. We'll see if anything comes of this, but hopefully the first step will be shifting the Model 3 and Y to these updated 12 volt batteries that the Model S and X now have. They last longer, and it's always good to see Elon continually reiterate that they plan to make their cars last a long time and not need service. Last up today, one of the first Tesla taxi fleets has officially been approved. Revel purchased a fleet of 50 Tesla Model Ys to put into service in New York. They customized the cars with an added screen in the rear and were planning to start operating until the Taxi and Limousine Commission shut them down last month. As of Monday the 26th, 35 of their Model Ys have been inspected and approved to hit the road. Revel's CEO believes that their remaining Model Ys will be approved soon as well. Their aim is to officially launch their taxi service on August 2nd and it will be exciting to see an all-electric zero emissions Tesla taxi fleet go into service in New York City. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see a complete guide for all the competition coming Tesla's way in 2022, you can check out that video linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.